Hi, my name is Nick Sadler. I'm a cinematographer. I would say the cinematographer is re is partially responsible for the image in collaboration with everybody else. W what what is what the thing that's responsible for the image is the script. That's what's responsible for the image. If I read a script and the script needs the photography to be presented in a certain way to advance the narrative with the director's collusion in that, that's what we do. It's very difficult to do answer that um, answer the question um, of what lenses to use in the modern setting. Um, it used to be very simple. When we were shooting on film, there was a very limited palette of lenses. You would go to Panavision, they had their look. You get Zeiss, they got their look. They got Cook, they got their look. Ongino, that was about it. And then in terms of choices, um, in my in my career, um, in my commercial career in London. I would use um, Zeiss standards and Zeiss super speeds. They were pretty much the, my go-to lenses. And there wasn't a lot of choice between lenses. There wasn't a lot of choice of film stocks. There wasn't a lot of choice of cameras. So while our choices were, since they were more limited, it was easier to get to what we wanted to do. But in the modern age, um, we have so many digital cameras, as well as film cameras, with so many different formats to shoot, and also a much wider variety of lenses that do different things. But in, in terms of how I choose a lens, it is a very, very um, complex series of parameters that you need to make that choice. The first one could be the physical size of the lens. It just comes down to how big it is. It's very difficult for me to put um, a lens on a camera that will need to be worked handheld for a whole day. Uh, if I put a heavy lens on, my operator will become fatigued very quickly and I, my shots won't look as good. And I will say, okay, I will compromise image quality to get the shots that I need to get. That's more important in that moment. You, you need to understand the equipment that you use in, in great detail. Uh, cinematographers are amongst the most experienced of people on any film set. The director has had far less experience of being on set than you, and you need to understand the technical ramifications of what you're doing to be a good craftsperson. And once you have this under control, you push it to the floor and it's the box that you stand on. You need this base. The most important part is how you communicate. So you need to be a good communicator. In order for you to, to be uh, useful to a director as a cinematographer, is there needs to be a love relationship between you and them, and you need to seduce them into, um, into your vision. And in cinematography, you have to have a line that you, you sit on. You, you have a line of how you're going to be doing things, which is a consistent line, and you vary from that line. But once you've got your benchmark position, which is the storyline, you can use the lenses to, tell, to punctuate the story. You punch in for certain things. You've got a moment in the script where the man is falling in love with the woman. We need to see through the man's eyes that the woman is very beautiful come back, go longer, use a classic beauty um, uh, focal length, 105 to 135 mil in that bracket. And because of the history of art, we understand in photography, this is magazine style photography, has a different texture. And even though the audience can't articulate the difference, they feel the difference. So you have to be manipulative. How to, how to do this. If I, if, I, if I think of a film where I really notice the photography, it's because the film isn't good. What your photography has to do is melt into the background. So the film is a, is a totality. And with the meal analogy, it's the same thing. When you have a meal that's really delicious, it's one whole thing. And when you eat it, it's just all these little textures and little flavors is what makes it so amazing. It's balance. And you might have a notion of a little texture, a little taste, and that's what it is in the in lens choices. These little things are um, are little textures that, in the totality, they don't have. They're not obvious. So if you take that a, 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 a camera like the the Sony Venice, um, if you look inside the menu structure, it's got a 6K 3.2 sensor. It's got a 4K 3.25 uh, to a 2.35 sensor. You can actually change the shape and the, um, of the frame, and also its sensitivity. So inside the camera is actually a whole lot of choices, and those choices will work differently for different lenses. So your choice is not just the lens by itself, but how it fits in to the whole totality of what you're doing, plus the story. So you're, 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 um, you have to know a lot about what the equipment does from a technical perspective. 
But always with cinematography, you go back to the narrative. 